Hey, what's up my beauties? Today we're gonna to be taking that ClojureScript Hello World app that we've been building and we're gonna make it a little more professional by adding FigWheel to it. Now, because I cherish you, I am going to add timestamps in the description below. Check those out so you can just jump to the sections that are more interesting to you. And if you're finding this content valuable, please feel free to knock that like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get started. To begin, let's just start with a quick recap of what we've been doing, and that's been working on a quick bare bones Hello World Closure Script app. Now, the app that we've been building is not exactly the way that you would build a Closure Script application if you were doing like a professional project. There's a little bit more development tools that we can add to it to make our workflow a little more effective. And what do I mean when I say effective? Well, if we were working on a modern JavaScript application, you would have bundlers like Webpack, and you'd be using hot module reloading, you'd be doing code splitting, you'd be doing all these kinds of great things that really allow you to optimize the code that you're writing, but not only the code that you end up shipping to your users, your experience while developing the code, which actually makes you move faster. Now, if you wanted to achieve this in a JavaScript application, and when I say that, I mean something like a React or a Vue, you would just use something like Webpack or Rollup and you'd be good to go. But seeing as we're Clojure Script, we are a different language. We are a language that is built with the idea that you should be able to do hot module reloading and REPL driven development very easily. We have our own tools. The primary tools for this are FigWheel Main and Shadow-CLJS. There are more tools, but these are the two that I would recommend hands down. And as I mentioned, what we're gonna be doing in this video is FigWheel Main. That's my go-to usually, although I really do like Shadow CLJS. So what we're actually gonna be learning in this video is we're gonna be starting slow and we're gonna go through each piece of our Hello World application and show you how you tweak it and modify it to actually use FigWheel. So we'll start off by actually making a multi-segmented namespace. Then we're gonna go into upgrading our Clojure Script version just so that we're on the latest because since I actually started this Hello World app, there's been some bumps to the Clojure Script version. Then we're going to actually show you how to add a dependency. That's gonna be FigWheel. We're gonna show you how to configure FigWheel, add your own index.html file, add a CSS file, and then finally, how to do live refresh for your CSS and an HMR for your Clojure Script. Okay, let's get going. All right, as always, we have my editor on the right. On the left, we have our Hello World application. And I want you to take a quick look at this Hello World app right here, because if you've been following along, you're gonna notice that resources-ignore is something new. Just definitely ignore that for now. That's why I actually put the dash ignore. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, and I'll show you how that fits in. So right now, what we have is we have source, and then we have our app.cljs inside of source. And what that leads to is a namespace that looks like this. This is what we call a single segmented namespace, and it means it only has like one name to it. The problem with doing something like a single segmented namespace and the reason why we recommend that you use a multi-segmented namespace is to avoid namespace collisions where you may have a generic name for your namespace and then it might conflict with another one. So what we want to do is let's just quickly make this a multi-segmented namespace. And to do that, all you have to do is add a new folder inside of your source directory and we'll call it hello underscore world. The underscore is important because we're in Java so you don't use something like a dash, you'll use an underscore. If you use a dash, it won't actually work. Then I'm just gonna drag the app.cljs into the hello world and what we have to do, because remember, this is following a path. And before, it was inside of source directly, so we could just write app. Now it's inside of hello world. So what we have to do is hello dash world, and then we can do dot app. And you'll notice here it is a dash, and that's because you're writing in Clojure Script and we use dashes. But when it actually looks how to find this package, it's going to convert that to an underscore right here. Now that that's done, we're gonna go into our depths.eden file and I'll collapse the side menu there. And we need to change this little compile option here and down here. So we'll change it to hello world dot app. And I'll just take this as well and add it here. And that should do it. Now, if we try to run this, and remember, this is our little closure alias that we created in the previous video, link above. This should run no problem. All right, beautiful. And we see that it ran and started the REPL and it opened this page for us. And then if we open the terminal here, 
we see that it logged our between two parens hello and our little HTML collection that we had. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to close down that rebel there, clear everything up, and we'll get to the next part, which is upgrading our Clojure script dependency. This version of Clojure is 7.6.4, so we'll just upgrade to that. And then what we wanna do is we wanna actually add a new dependency, and that new dependency is going to be Big wheel main. What you need for that is right here, we're going to add in the name of the package and then we're going to add in the version that we need. Now you might be wondering, how do I actually find the name of a closure package that needs to go here? Well, there are two ways that I usually do it. One is you could actually go to the GitHub repo. So for example, you could go to fig wheel main on GitHub and then every single one of the closure repos will always have uh, how to add it to your project. Another option is you can go here, which is closure. And Clojure is kind of like a uh, NPM repository where you can just go here and search for your package. So we could be like figwheel-main. And then we'll see it's com.bhowman slash figwheel main. Now this one is 0.2.6 snapshot. We don't want this snapshot version because this snapshot version is latest code. So every single time you run the project, it's going to see if even more new code has come in and it's going to pull that in. So we don't want that exactly. We want the latest stable version, which is 0.2.5. So let's add this in. All right. Now we know it's going to be right. Gonna copy that over just so I don't have to type it all again. And then I do 0.2.5. That's how you add a new package in a Clojure project. Now what we wanna do is we want to actually connect FigWheel to our project. To do this, what you wanna do is before we were using the Clojure script runner, that's cljs.main. We don't wanna use that one anymore. We wanna use FigWheel to run our Clojure script compiler and do all of its special magic. So we're gonna do figwheel.main, that's it. That's actually why it's called figwheel.main. And figwheel is actually kind of just a wrapper around the cljs.main runner and then adds extra functionality to it. I don't want this watch command anymore and we'll see why we don't want that in the future. But other than that, you're gonna notice that everything is the same. This is all you need to do. And this is what I meant by figwheel main is kind of like a wrapper around the CLJS main. It actually accepts a lot of the same arguments and flags. So to prove that point, let's actually just run it. And remember what this page looks like because this is the index.html file that Clojure Script will serve to you. And you're gonna see the difference when figwheel main comes into play because it's gonna serve a different type of index.html file. And you see that now we are successfully running our project using FigWheel. And if we take a look at the browser console, we once again see that our code has successfully been injected. We have hello between two parens and we have our HTML collection here, except we have many more uh, P tags that we found because there's just a lot more on this page. And with that, you are successfully running FigWheel. And I'm just gonna go here and update this clgs.main as well, because if we wanna use FigWheel for the socket command, which we do, then it needs to be figwheel.main rather than clgs.main. And we'll just keep this source here just for now. This is, again, th th this dev here alias is gonna be the main one that we're actually using. Now, if we go back into our terminal right now, we're gonna notice up here, we saw some warnings and it was attempting to dynamically add target to class path. Target directory is not on the class path. This is something that we can remedy pretty easily. All we have to do is go up to here and add a new keyword, which is something that you're gonna have on all your projects, no matter what, because you really do wanna control what is on the class path. And this is going to be source. And then you're gonna add another one called target. What is target? Target is dynamically created by FigWheel and it needs to be on the path. Now, the reason why you didn't need to do this is before is because all we cared about before, what was in the source directory and the source directory is automatically included. So ClojureScript knows where to look for your source code. But when you wanna start adding new sources like we're gonna be doing in this video or in new directories, that's when you have to add this paths. And as I said, by default, you're probably gonna always wanna have this key. It's just nice to have because it's very explicit where you're looking for different pieces of code. And we'll just rerun this to see that those warnings went away. 
and here we go the new one opened up successfully and i'll close the old one down and just as a sanity check for all you watchers out there my fig wheel is not actually running super fast like when i run that alias it does take several seconds especially because i'm running obs in the background uh the reason why it looks like it's running very quickly is just because i'm cutting that out in post-production so any hoozles the point is you do not see any more warnings up here like we saw previously the first time we ran it so that's the value of adding in the target directory right here like we said to the path like we did right here okay sweet so here we are we have this beautiful fig wheel main page but the thing is we're going to be building our own closure script application so probably something you want to learn is how do i actually get fig wheel to serve my index.html file and not the one it defaults with in order to do that that's where this resources-ignore file comes in now i call it resources-ignore so that fig wheel wouldn't pick up what i laid down so what you're actually going to do is take this rename it to just resources, okay? And then inside resources, you need a public directory. And that's because FigWheel is looking and serving for resources slash public, and then inside of there, it's gonna look for your HTML files, your CSS files, or anything like that. Then what you wanna do is you can just open up this index.html file here. And this index.html file is super basic on purpose because the point is not really to show you how to write the index.html file, just to show you how to get FigWheel to serve it. You need to now stop your FigWheel server. Once again, I'll just clear up all that noise and we'll run clj-a dev again. And this time we should see that FigWheel is gonna serve our index.html file and not the one it comes with. The reason why this happened, and I did this on purpose, was to show you that just because you put a resources slash public dir there and you put an index.html file in it, doesn't mean that FigWheel knows where to find that code. That was the whole point of adding our paths. And it even warned us here. It says, I see that you added it there, but it's not on the class path. So. What do we do to remedy this? Well, we add, and let me just open up the sidebar here, we have to add our resources directory to this class path right here. So let's just go ahead and do that. Say resources. Now we'll try rerunning it. Looks like we're not getting a warning anymore. So let's see if we actually get our index.html file. Oh, look at that. Look at that basic, basic HTML file. So pretty. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's how you add uh, an HTML file or make FigWheel serve your HTML file. You have to one, add one in a resources slash public, and then your index.html file will go inside of there. And then after that, you have to tell FigWheel to look at resources. So you make sure you put it on the class path here. Oh, and I do want to also show you something. So every single time you change this file, uh, woof, it's been changed. You're going to notice that nothing actually changes here. You do have to hard refresh it in order to see the changes that happen. All right, so moving on, we're going to add a little bit of life to our index.html file by adding a style.css. I've just added this basic one here, and I just made it so that we can show you some style live refreshing a little bit later on. But all you have to do is add a style.css, just like you would in any other web project. There's nothing special about ClojureScript. It's mostly just following the same patterns as everything you do on the web. And we're going to take this line that I commented out, and I'm just going to enable it. And we'll save that. And we should be able to refresh. And now we see that it works. And the reason why we didn't have to make any other changes is because FigWheel is already looking inside of our resources directory. And as a fair warning, there are a ton of different ways that you can actually use CSS just like there are in JavaScript land. Uh, don't worry, we'll talk about some of those in a later video and how to really make a robust CSS tool chain for yourself if that's what you're into. So the last two pieces that we want to do are adding in live CSS refresh, and we also want to add in HMR. In order to turn these features on, we need to create another file, which is known as a build file. This would be the equivalent if you were in Webpack land as having like a webpack.config.js. So in the side menu here, what we'll do is we need to create a new file, and it's going to be called dev.cljs.eden. 
The dot seal js dot eden part is always required for fig wheel. The dev part is whatever you actually want that to be. Please note that this dev dot seal js dot eden is not the same as the depths dot eden. This one down here is actually for fig wheel itself. Now you create your dev.cljs.eden file. What you're going to do is we want to tell uh, the compiler where the main file is, the entry file. And that one is just going to be hello world.app. That's all we have to do there. And that's the minimum you need to actually get this dev.cljs.eden to work. And then we don't need this compile anymore. What we need is to replace it with build and then the name of our build file, which is just dev. The whole thing is dev.cljs.eden, but it's enough for FigWheel to just look for a dev. All right. So what we're going to end up doing to get live CSS refresh going is you go into your dev.cljs.eden file, and we're going to add in this little meta map up here. And this is purely just closure script. This is not something syntactically that's like uh, FigWheel main. And we're just going to tell it to look for our CSS files inside of the resources slash public directory, which is where they currently live. In addition to that, we should go back into our HTML file and we're actually going to add in the JavaScript that connects everything. So for example, our dev.cljs.eden file, by default, FigWheel is going to give us a dev-main.js file. Just add this script tag to your HTML file. When you do that, that's actually required for FigWheel to do live CSS refresh. So as a recap, we have our CSS file in the public directory. We have our index.html file, and that has a link to our style sheet, which is here. And it's also gonna have a link to our JavaScript that's output by FigWheel main. Close the previous one, clear that up. And I'm gonna open up the browser console so I can show you what that script tag actually did. So we see our hello between two parens console log just as we did before. In addition, we see this web socket that was actually opened up by FigWheel and it tells us that it created a session for us named Brant. Let's actually see if that does anything useful for us. So before it was blue and we'll make it red and we see that now it live refreshed for us. We didn't have to change anything. Okay, let's make it green, that's working. Let's actually do something interesting. We'll make it, I don't know, font 12 pixels. No, that's too small. Let's do 36 pixels, oops, 37 pixels. So you can see how great this is and see pretty fast changes live in the app that you're developing. Just like you can do this with your CSS, you can also do something similar, get this instant feedback loop with JavaScript using something called HMR or hot module reloading. HMR is the last piece of this video. So what we'll do is show you how to connect that. What we're gonna do is go into our dev.cljs.eden and we have to actually tell FigWheel, and this is the only thing you have to really do, where your JavaScript lives. So all we do is tell it to watch DERS and we'll tell it to watch the source directory. So that turns HMR on. Now what we can do is we can actually go into our app.cljs file and we're gonna add a little meta tag up here by the namespace. And it's gonna be called figwheel hooks. All right, so what we do now is, now that we have FigWheel hooks and we have access to the hooks, I'm just gonna quickly paste in some code so you can see what will happen. And the idea is this. Specifying this metadata up here, FigWheel hooks, gives us access to some of the hooks. One of the hooks is after load, and I believe there's another one called like before load. And then we have our console log as we normally did. So the first time this page loads, it's going to only console log the hello between two parens. Then if you were to change the file, save it, that's when on the subsequent render, it's actually also going to still do the hello between two parens console log, but then it's also going to log the re-render function, which is hello between two parens again. So we open up the console log here, and I'm just going to refresh this page because it's already running. And what you see is hello between two parens. Notice how you don't see hello between two parens uh, dot 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 again. How do you actually get to see that one run? Well, when you save it, 
that's when the afterload also gets run. So we get hello between two parens, and then we also get the hello between two parens again. What is the value of this? Why do you need this? Inside the after reload or even the before load, what you can do is set up and tear down activities. And what this means is you can control the side effects. If you are performing uh, tasks that are mutating the DOM, so for example, maybe you're adding an event listener to a button. You probably wouldn't want to do that every single time the file gets changed and saved because what that means is you would have like nine event listeners on the same button. So what you want to do is you want to say, okay, when the page loads the first time, put an event listener on. Every single time it loads after that, don't keep adding an event listener. Or maybe what you would want to do is put the event listener on the first time and then every single time the page reloads, you want to remove the event listener and then re-add the event listener back on. So, but what I'm just going into now is the surface level of a much bigger topic, which is called reloadable code and how to write it as such. So that'll be a video for a future date. All right, so that is everything for configuring and adding FigWheel to your project. This is now pretty close to how you would run a modern ClojureScript application. There really isn't that much configuration that goes into it. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if so, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.